Mount Church. Thanks so much for joining us today. Whether you're in Portland, Colorado, Orange County, anywhere in the world, we're so glad you're here today. We have microservices going on and we have worship nights going on and pop-up events coming up. If that sounds like something you want to do, send me a message, melissa at resoundchurch.com. We also have online groups that are happening. If that sounds like something you want to get plugged into as well, send me a message. Again, melissa at resoundchurch.com and I can get you plugged in. Coming up next, we have an incredible word and an incredible worship, and we believe you're going to be blessed.
would you raise your hands and worship with us today? my prayer and the prayers of us at Resound Church that wherever you are, whenever you're watching right now, that this is not just another video that you watch, but just as we come out of an awesome time of worship together, that you feel the presence of God. And as we're about to dive into the word of God, that you will be encouraged that God will speak to you in this time. And before we jump into the word of God and continue our conversation on the Holy Spirit and his role in the life of a follower of Jesus, I wanted to pause and say thank you to everybody who continues to give to Resound Church financially. You know, the reality is that there are many businesses, many churches, and many nonprofits who are being forced to close their doors because of the current state of the economy. And I don't want Resound Church to be that. For us, we have a mission that we are on that is too important. We have a message that we wanna share that is too important. And so I wanna say thank you to everybody who gives because it is only because of us together, believing that God has us on this mission together and giving to it financially. That is the only reason that we as Resound Church are gonna to continue to move forward and share the love and share the hope of God 
even in a time like now. And I wanna encourage you, if you are part of our community, whether you live near one of our campuses or you're part of our online family and you haven't yet taken the step to maybe partner with us and give financially, I wanna encourage you, would you take maybe a faith step with me today with those of us who call Resound Church home and trust God that exactly what it says in his word will happen. As we give, as we put God's house first, then God's blessing will be poured out on us. And this is not a, hey, if you give to the church, man, you're going to get super wealthy. Now, this is about, man, when I step out in faith and give and support the message that God is giving us to share, then God is going to provide all that I need. It is not a prosperity gospel. It is a provisional gospel. We serve a God who provides. So thank you to everybody who gives. Thank you to everybody who's going to take that step starting today. You can give online at resoundchurch.com slash give. You can text in your gift using the information below, or you can mail in your gift. But however you give, I want to encourage you and just let you know that this is more than just a financial gift, but this is us partnering together to see the hope and love of Jesus continue to move forward. So thank you for your giving, and let's dive into the Word of God today. Hey, welcome everybody to our Resound Church online experience. We are so thrilled that you could join us today. We in a, in a series of discussions uh, called the Holy Spirit. Week one, we covered the power of the Holy Spirit. Last week, Pastor Devin spoke a great message about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, we're speaking about the gifts of the Spirit. And then next week, we're talking about being led by the Spirit. This is a series that hopefully will help you be aware of the power that you have as a believer inside of you that can be activated at work in your life. But today we're jumping in and we're diving into what it means to be used by God and the outworkings of the gifts of the Spirit in our life. Uh, we're jumping into 1 Corinthians 12, which is, really gives some description of the gifts. Then what's interesting, it jumps to 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter. And then you jump onto 1 Corinthians 14, and it speaks about the outworkings of the gifts. So right in the middle of everything is love and how we work out these gifts. So let's jump in and let's dive in on what it means to be used by God in our unique gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, it says, For now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Paul is saying, I want you to be educated in this area. I don't want you to lack information. I want you to understand what your gifts are, to understand what you're called to. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray by dumb idols. Therefore, I want you to know, that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus because he was addressing an issue within the church. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but in the same Spirit, he distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. There is one Spirit of God, and He lives inside of you. He lives in the body of believers called the church. And the Holy Spirit distributes gifts according to His desire, according to what the Bible says, the common good. Not our good, but actually the common good. What is good for the world, this day and age, this moment in history, that is the gift that the Holy Spirit says, this is what I'm going to put inside of people to outwork for the benefit of all humanity, all lives. Now, I believe that we are all given unique gifts. And when we don't use them, the issue is, is that we're not acting at our fullest capacity. I think it's when we actually break a bone or something happens to our body, we often realize how much we actually need that part of our body. I remember a few years ago, I was on vacation at the beach in the Oregon coast and we were having an incredible family vacation and just it was summertime, it was beautiful weather. And because at that point, all of our, our kids were quite small, we had a baby gate at the bottom of some stairs. And in order to impress my wife, Alyssa, I thought, I'm going to jump over this thing from the top of the stairs and I'm going to land like a champion. So I did a bit of a run up and I hollered at my kids and Alyssa, I said, watch this. I got this. It's going to be awesome. And so I backed up 
I said, here we go. And everyone was kind of cheering me on. And I jumped. I did this big jump. And I cleared it, except for my little toe. And I landed with a big thump in pain. Now, one thing about my wife that many people don't know is that when I am in pain, I'm talking when I hurt myself, she finds it the funniest thing in the world. She will laugh, roll laughing when I'm hurt. The more pain, the better. It's like she dies laughing. She says, I got a rubber face. It's too funny not to laugh. I'm in pain and brokenness, and I'm getting laughed at. Now, after that, I remember driving around trying to just get through every day. And the, the problem with a little toe, there's like nothing they can do about it when it's broken. And I notice how much I need that little toe when I'm just walking around, when I'm trying to drive the car with that foot. It's just everyday things and functions are so much harder when you understand that this is a broken part of your body. In the same way, when we have broken parts of our body, it's often when it's not being utilized or it's a broken part that we realize how much we need that. And too often what we have is we have broken parts of the body because people feel either hurt or broken or offended and they walk away from using their giftings and the body of Christ has not been used at its fullest capacity because we have broken parts of the body. Now what's worse than a broken part of the body is actually an isolated or a cut off part of the body. A great example is this. My head is definitely looks appropriate in terms of the rest of my body. It looks good. Most people look good with a head on their body. But if you take that head and put it in a jar, I think we would all agree that would be an awkward look. The reality is this, is that even though, even though you have gifts, you are called to belong as to the body of Christ, to be joined. I believe that the fullness of your gifting, of who you are, is expressed within community and other people. Your gifts are given by God, for God, and for other people. You are a part of the body, and you're not called to be a cut-off part of the body. You're called to be joined to the larger body. Not a broken part, but a whole part that is alive, active, and well, a part of what God wants to do in your life. It goes on, actually, to say in 1 Corinthians, Paul gives some context to giftings. He says, If I speak in tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. I give all that I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love. I gain nothing. You see, in 1 Corinthians 12, it speaks about different giftings, about gifts of prophecy and and uh, interpreting tongues and all these incredible gifts. But Paul gives us context. He says, if you don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. There's a lack, there's a lack within the gifting. And so we got clarity now of first. Corinthians 12 of what Paul is trying to communicate to the church, not just back then in the church of Corinth, but I believe the church today here in Orange County or here in Portland, Oregon or Denver or the Netherlands, wherever you're watching this, this is a message for us today. The first is that the gifts are an expression of the Holy Spirit's desire, not ours, but His desire and for His good. It's for His purpose, how we walk into the larger picture. The second is gifts are not only given by the Holy Spirit, but they're actually fueled by the Holy Spirit. So not only are they given to us, and, the, and God says, I want you to use your gift, but listen, He gives you the power to be able to use it. The third is that the gifts, gifts are given to be given. The idea, the beautiful thing about the gifts of the Spirit is that they were not meant to be consumed by one person. They were actually not designed just to go in somebody, but through somebody. Your gifts are not just meant for you. They're meant for God and for each other. The next is that gifts function according to its truest self when it's part of a larger picture. I believe the beauty and uniqueness 
of who you are is seen within a larger body is that the best version of you and who you're called to be is around a healthy body of believers that celebrate your gifting, that love who you are, that champion the gifts of God in your life. And the fifth and last thing that we see out of 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, gifts lack substance when we lack love. Love gives your gifts purpose. Love actually gives your gifts meaning. So without your gifts, you could feed the poor and have this beautiful gift of mercy, or you can have this incredible gift where you can prophesy over people and be so right on. You can have incredible faith where you kind of just see things that everyone else doesn't, and you see the kingdom of God advance your life, but you lack love then you lack substance. Love is what gives substance to a beautiful gift. Without love, I believe it's a hollow gift, a shallow gift. Come on, let's find God's love and be people of substance when we're being used by God. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. What a powerful scripture. It's instructing us, listen, use the gift. It means if you have a gift, use it. Be a practitioner of whatever God has given you. Whatever unique thing that God has given you, be a practitioner of what God has given you. Be someone that uses it, displays it, let God use you in the gift He's given you. We all have uniqueness. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you beautifully. And my encouragement to you today is use that wonderful gift. You're not too used up and banged up. You are useful. You are not useless. Use your gifts for God. I remember when I left uh, Hillsong Church, I, had, I was done with my Bible college uh, days and I had finished up with being a part of a great church as a part of it. I had moved cities and I'll tell you, I remember feeling cold to use my gifts in this one city to start pastoring. And it was a scary time about 20 years ago when I was 20 years, just before I was 20 years, around 20 years of age. It was a scary time because everything was so new and fresh and I, I was kind of learning my way in ministry. And I remember going through the feelings and emotions of feeling useless and unsure and being told that I'm too young for ministry and I'm too this or too little of that, too loud or too, too many things to be useful. And I had so many voices speaking to me and I felt so insecure. But I started making a decision, okay, if God's called me to this, I'm gonna keep going. And as I went along and working through and navigating through my insecurities, I remember just having a hard time with it. And I remember wanting to quit. I remember thinking, I'm done with this. And then there was a point in which one of my mentors, he challenged me and he said to me, he asked me a very simple question. He said, Luke, what has God called you to do? Now such a simple question was so transformative. Because I realized that it was my feelings and my hurts and my emotions that were driving the narrative of my life as opposed to purpose and what God was saying. And it was a change of thinking. I realized I have to do what God has called me to. And at that point, I realized what First Peter is saying is I had to be fa a faithful steward of what God has graced me to do. So instead of looking around at how other people were hurting my feelings and the pain that I was going through, I determined in my heart right now, I'm going to be faithful with what God's called me to. So what I did is I went to one of the worst schools in the area and I started ministering to those students. And we would get about 50 to 100 students to this lunch club that we started. We saw many of these kids funnel into our youth ministry. I took over this youth ministry with about 30, 40 kids. And rather than resenting, I decided I'm going to be faithful steward with what God has given me in that moment. And I poured into those kids. And what's exciting is that we saw that grow 
to about 230 students because I was faithful with what God had given me. I wasn't resenting what God gave me by looking at everything else. I was looking at what God put in my hands. While you're obsessing at everyone else's journey, everyone else's story, everyone else's gifts, you'll never be a faithful steward with what he's put in your hands. Here's the beautiful thing is he has graced you with gifts. He's graced you with a moment to be faithful stewards of moments of your uniqueness, of your abilities. So Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. What I do know is that God has placed things in your life that just because circumstances change doesn't mean the call of God changes for your life. You are called by God and for God. He has a plan for your life. There are unique things that only you can do. And I'm gonna encourage you in this moment to be awakened to the purposes of God in your life. So here are some key points as we land this plane. The first is sow into good soil. Look at the seed of your life. Look at what God has put in your life and take those seeds and put it in soil that's healthy. Be planted in a healthy, not perfect, but healthy soil. So whatever God has put in your life, put yourself in people that are gonna cultivate the gift of God in your life. That may feel uncomfortable, it might feel stretching because what happens is you take a seed and it can be in protective layers for potentially thousands of years. But you take that seed and put it in soil. What happens is it has to change out of its current form as a seed and there's a stretching in that growth. Put that seed, that purpose of God in a place where you can stretch out, where you can grow up, where someone won't try to chop you down to their size. Be under leadership and around leadership and around people that celebrate you, that help cultivate the gift of God in your life. Healthy soil. Do not take your seeds and throw them into a toxic environment. This beautiful gift of God that's in your life, do not grab those seeds and put them around toxic people that will just constantly criticize you, tear you down, pull you into situations that you shouldn't be in. Get your seed and place it in healthy soil where you will thrive. Second, be generous with what you have been given. With your time, treasure, and talent. We fundamentally don't give God anything that we believe is fundamentally just ours. When we believe this is mine, well, I'm not going to give it away. When I believe it's God and God's in the first place, then we're just giving back to God what belongs to Him. So when I give, when I tithe, all I'm doing is I'm giving back to God actually what belongs to Him. My gifts are given by God and designed to give them back, be given back to God. The gifts of God are designed to be given back. Be generous with what God puts in your hand. The third is to tend your garden. The, the Garden of Eden was the greatest picture of placement. You have Adam and Eve that are in this utopian place where there's no death. They have this amazing relationship with God. And they mess it up because they stopped tending their garden. And they started looking at what they shouldn't eat as opposed to what they were called to tend. They were obsessing over things that weren't given to them. Stop obsessing over gifts that are not yours. They have not been given to you. Maybe you don't have a speaking gift and that's okay. Maybe you don't have a worship leader's gift. That's okay. Maybe you aren't good at poetry. Maybe you aren't good at details and logistics. Stop obsessing over what you're not and start celebrating what God has given you and tend that. Tend your garden. Tend what God has given you. Take responsibility for what God has put inside of you. Nobody, nobody will be as passionate about your gift than you and God. So take ownership of your gift. Cultivate it and tend your garden. Build it. You see this when uh, within church, we tend to look at our passions and we want to push our passions on somebody else. 
So if I'm passionate about a mercy gift and outreach programs, I believe that in order for you to be saved and whole, everyone else has to do what I'm doing. Maybe I'm a prayer warrior. I've got a gift of intercession and prayer. And maybe it's a faith gift. Well, I look through that lens and I want everyone else to do what I'm doing. Listen, be passionate about your gifts and be passionate about the fact that not everyone else is like you. That not everyone else will be as passionate about the thing that God has called you to do. You are called to be the champion of whatever you were gifted at and whatever you're called to. We'll champion that, pour into that, grow that, and build on that in Jesus' name. The next is discover your gifts, then use them for God's glory. That's why the Bible says in Romans 12, 1, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true, true and proper worship. So proper worship isn't just singing, though singing is part of worship. It's singing. It's serving. It's the way we think and work and treat our family. We're doing this for God. We're changing the purpose of our lives. That every function of my life is to bring glory to God. That these gifts I'm given, no matter what they are, whatever I have, the outworking of them are going to be for the glory of God. They're going to be for God's goodness. What's incredible is you've been gifted by grace. By grace, God has given you these gifts. Now what's incredible is that you have been given gifts by grace and you haven't been given gifts by God's grace also. What's great about God's grace is that it's not just about what God gives us, but also what God gives somebody else. What's amazing about other people in the church is the fact that other people are way more talented and better at me at so many other things. So what's incredible is I can celebrate them knowing that that is God's grace on display for my life. That there are people, maybe they may not be as loud as me, but they are gifted at logistics. They're gifted at organization. And they can play a part of my life that they can be in an area where I lack. Well, they can feel that lack. Is that not the message of grace? In my weakness, he is made strong. This is the message of grace. Somebody else Somebody else's strength is God's grace for your weakness. And as long as we can be humble and recognize that other people are amazing and that we can celebrate them and love them and honor them as a part of your life, God's grace, God's gift to you is actually other people. It's not just that you are called to be a part of the body and that it's what you bring to the body, but it's actually what the body does for you. The moment I chop my toe off, my toe lose, loses all access to the blood and life flow and it'll just die off. I believe the same is true for us. When we cut off, I'll tell you, there is a death inside of us. God's grace to us is on display with other people. So the last thing is understand what you're called to. Some of you have a prophetic voice, a prophetic gift to help us see what God sees, that which he wants us to see. Maybe your prophetic gift is seen in songwriting, encouraging words, insight. You're able to see things that only God can see. He's bringing, he's enlightening things. What I see is so much of the prophetic is designed to build up. It's not about tearing down. There's a gift of serving and a ministerial gift. People that work, they love to serve other people. Maybe it's a teaching gift. Maybe an encouragement gift. There's something about you where you just want to encourage every person around you. Maybe it's a giving gift where you come alive when you get to give towards God and helping others. There's a leadership gift that's so powerful. Maybe you are a leader. You naturally influence. Well, keep developing it and building. Maybe it's a mercy gift where you want to see lives restored. You want to help people. There's that compassion, that high level of compassion. Whatever it is, whatever your gift is, discover it. Hone in. Develop your craft and your gifting. Because the better you are at you, the better we are at we. We get better when you grow as an individual and contribute that, that gift and that uniqueness, that craft to the body of Christ. 
So my prayer for you is that you understand the Holy Spirit's role in your life. He's given you gifts and he's given you the power to use it in Jesus' name. Well, hey, if you could just close your eyes and bow your heads with me. And I'm gonna pray of you that in Jesus' name you will come alive, alive to what God has called you to. So come on, let's pray together. I pray of every person a blessing. I thank you that we are the head and not the tail. We are blessed and not cursed. I thank you for the gifts you've given us. I pray for all those that have been offended, hurt, that have walls up around their giftings, fears and insecurities. I pray as people are watching that even now, Holy Spirit, come and tear down those walls, that we will come alive in our gifts. We'll come alive in what we're called to do. I pray that we will see a revival of gifts within the church. Help us, God, to not only discover the grace of God and the gifts we're given, but may we also discover the grace of God on display in our friends and in the church community and people around us. God, bless your church as we come and go, as people watching all around the world, that God, you will bless them in all that we do in Jesus' name. And right now, as people are away, right now praying, I just pray of every person, every person that is away from you. And right now, if you're, you're watching and maybe you once were a follower of Jesus and you stopped following Jesus, maybe once upon a time in your life, you were passionate about Jesus, you were a follower of Christ and you've let circumstance get in the way or maybe you've just never said yes to following Jesus. If that's you, we want to give you an invitation right now to say yes to Jesus. And if you do that, please make sure you email prayer at resoundchurch.com or you can DM us or message us, whether it's on YouTube or it's on uh, Facebook, whatever it is, message us, reach out to us. But we want to pray right now. If God is moving in your heart, you want to give your life to Jesus, where you are seated, where you're watching this, let's do this together. And if you want to say yes to Jesus, I want to invite you to pray a powerful prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Come on, let's pray and we'll invite you to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Lord, I turn from what it was and I turn to you. I thank you that you died. I thank you that you rose again, that I may have life and life eternal. And from this day on, I declare that I am saved and that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I give you my life. I give you my all. I turn from what I was and I turn to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Bless you, church. We have an incredible message for you next week, our last week, week four of the series of discussions on the Holy Spirit. Bless you, and thanks for tuning in. Wherever you are today, we hope today's word encouraged you, and we hope you were blessed by it. Remember to get connected, send me a message, Melissa at ResoundChurch.com. For prayer, prayer at ResoundChurch.com. Our giving link is down below. And remember, we love you. Jesus loves you. Have a blessed week.